Hello, I'm Carly Stevens, Director of Recruitment here at the main group, Talent Consultants. Welcome to our e-learning series. So this series has been designed to support organisations who are looking to implement direct talent processes. And the series covers attraction, retention and development. Myself and our CEO, Mita Sani, have distilled our years of knowledge to help support you in upskilling yourselves and your team in generating really robust talent processes. Today, we're going to be covering a module within the Attract series, and this is all about job description creation. So, there are three main reasons why you want to have really good comprehensive job descriptions in place at the beginning of any recruitment campaign. Now, everyone knows the one reason that it's a great place to capture all of the data and information about the role. But it's also a really great talent attraction tool. If you get your job description right, this can be a really fantastic tool in attracting talent. And also, the job description is a key tool to utilise later on in the screening process. So you want to always start with a job description when you're looking for any new hire. And we recommend that with your job descriptions, you keep the same template and keep the same branding on each of them for within your organisation. And then you swap out the information that's relevant for each role. So before you put pen to paper on any new job description, it's a good idea to do a discovery piece and have a really good think about the whys of the role. Think about why we're hiring for this role. What's the purpose? What's this person's day to day going to look like and why? Think about where the role fits in the organization in terms of what team they're going to be in, who they're reporting into, anyone reporting into them. And then also think in detail about any other stakeholders that this role will interface with. And that can include internal and external as well. And by the end of this process, you should have a really clear idea of the why of the role. So next, we're ready to actually write the job description. So first of all, start by talking about you, your organisation. It's important to bear in mind that sometimes a candidate might not have heard of your company until they see the job description. So if we don't include some information about the company, it can be an area that we could really miss out on. So we say at the top of your job description, start with a lovely paragraph about the organisation. You want to be talking to your candidates about what you do and who you are, but also ensure that you include lots of lovely cultural indicators and make sure it's relevant from an employee's perspective. It's worth remembering that how attractive your job description looks can be the difference between a candidate choosing to work for your organisation or another. So we're next we're going to talk about the remit itself and turn to the role. So first of all, we want to have a really clearly defined paragraph here, just talking about the remit. And this is where you can think back to your discovery piece or draw on everything that you pulled there. Think about the why of the role, what is the function of it, and put a nice paragraph here around it. Then you want to follow up with your bullet points of duties. So you have a list of bullet points of all the tasks the person will be undertaking day to day. Now, this list doesn't have to be exhaustive, but it is a good idea to put quite a lot of detail in here. And the reason for that is, again, you're going to refer back to this when you're doing your screening and selection process. So you do want to include as many of the tasks as possible. So next is where we want to include our person specification. So a person specification is essentially all the things that you want your candidate to have when they join. And we're talking here about the personality traits. We're talking about the competencies, the skills, and also the experience that they need to have to come in and do this role. So it's really worth having a good think about this and being quite specific. So for an example, a competency for a negotiator role might be that they need to have a high tolerance for stress. No point hiring somebody who's going to be going into really stressful negotiations knowing that they don't enjoy stress or pressure. So have a really good think about the role and think about the personality, traits, competencies and experience that we need for somebody coming in to do the role. So when you are thinking about the person's specification, there are certain things that will be absolutely essential that the person will need to have, and they're not things that we're willing to be negotiable on. So this is where you wanna have a really good think about what is absolutely essential. Another example of this might be if somebody is coming in to do a marketing role and 80% of the role is going to be writing engaging copy. Somebody who has written copy and knows how to do that is going to be key. We're not going to be able to train them on that. We need that from the outset. So have a really good think about what is actually required and what we need them to have. Next is where you can think about where you can be a bit flexible. So 
obviously we've had our essentials before and now we're going to think about what is desirable. What are things that we would love this person to have, but we don't absolutely need for them to have. So an example of this might be you've got somebody who's got exactly the right temperament. They're a strong culture fit. They've got exactly the experience we're looking for, but they might have used a different software in their last role to the one that we use. Now, something like software can be trained, but a lot of the other things there can't. So have a really good think when you're creating the job description about where we can work in some flex. One of the reasons it's so key is that all of the variables you're looking for might not actually exist in one person. So when you think about where you can be flexible, this can actually be the difference between making a successful hire or not. So finally, on the job description, it's a really good idea to include as much detail about the setup as possible. So what we're talking about here is the hours, whether it's a full or part time role. We're looking at the working patterns, whether there's flexible or agile working or anything around that. Want to think about the perks. Again, we want this job description to be really compelling from start to finish. So think about all the attractive benefits for working for the organisation. And then obviously the comp and the salary. Now, there will be times maybe when a role is confidential and the salary information isn't able to be put on the job spec for, for confidentiality purposes. But where possible, we think it's a really good idea to include at least a range of your salary. And that makes sure that there's just no surprises later down the line for us or the candidate if we realise that there's a mismatch between their expectations. So, job description creation in summary. First of all, start with your discovery piece and think about the why of the role. Then include some really compelling information about your company, enticing candidates to want to work for you. Fully that up with the role remit, a nice paragraph where you refer back to your discovery piece and then include all of your bullets of the duties. Do a really detailed person specification, including your essential criteria and where you are willing to be flexible, and then include all the details of the setup. 